Hello, Mrs. Harvin again. All right. And me. So I've got this patient positioned on the digital side. So some differences between this side and the other side. One is my distance. I'm still at 40 inches, but I no longer have my film on the tabletop. I'm now here in the Bucky. So you have to make sure that your distance is showing 40 on the cassette. I've got my central ray lined up with the center of my body part. This lighted area here is my radiation field. And I have to make sure that my Bucky is lined up with that central ray as well. There's an actual notch, by the way, in the handle here. I don't know if you can actually see it. Oh, yeah, you can. There's a notch here, and that notch has got to be lined up with the middle of the central ray, which is that cross arrow. The other thing is, is the detent for your transverse, that automatic stopping point. If I didn't have that detent, then I wouldn't be in center with this tray. So i got to make sure I have an automatic stop. Okay. Then we're going to come out to this machine. And by the way, I know on film, the collimator tends to look a little bit crooked, okay? But it's not. Um, we know that it's perpendicular because we're looking at the actual um, degree measurement here on the, on the collimator and on the housing, and it shows zero. So we know that we're perpendicular up and down. If it was angled, okay, you would actually see this. So it would show you that you're off center. Oops. There we go. Back to center. So this is your digital side over here. Again, a little different than the CR side because now instead of having the console, we actually have this beautiful piece of equipment here. And what Mrs. Hartman's doing right now, she's just setting up for your patient again, putting basic patient information in, the schedule date and time, your patient number, name, you know, last and first, date of birth. And then over here, study description um, on here. It's important that you pick the body part that you're x-raying because this prompts the machine to set the automatic exposures for you. Get in on there if you can see it. Hand AB, oh, I'm sorry, AP and oblique, and it's the right hand. And then who the referring physician is and what type, whoops, sorry, I'm over here, and what type of actual procedure priority it is, so routine. So then we're gonna hit start study. Very simple. Okay, so this is why it's important to make sure that you've picked your body part, because it'll actually go ahead and prompt you for a hand in the AP position. All right, which okay. our patient is in that AP hand position. Okay, so Do then- Do take an a, a PA projection? Right. <laughs> so on this, you have an anatomically programmed machine. So this actually prevents you from having to have that technique chart in your office. You actually will put all that information into this machine and that way it's all ready to go for you. So I'm going to hit anatomically program. I'm going to pick uh, the section of the body that I have. So I'm going to go with an upper extremity and then I'm going to go with a hand. So my technical factors as far as my KVP, my MAS, my uh, thickness of body part in centimeters is there, my distance, focal spot size, all that is already programmed into this machine. Now, if you need to change any of these things, okay, let's say that I wanted to stick with the technique that I had on the other machine, I can change that. I have, whoops, where's my... Sorry, I'm probably in your way. No, there it is, MAS. And that will and change your MAS. MAS, okay, and I had a 50 kVP, so I can easily change that if I don't like what's already programmed into the machine. And some of that stuff kind of comes with time, knowing your machine. It's like an oven, whether it runs hot or cold. Mm -hmm. And um, so everybody's got, that's why you'll see on some of these technique charts, people's, you know, they'll scribble in, they'll cross something out and, you know, put something else they found worked better for them. Sometimes and as the phosphors get old in your imaging plates, you may need to change your techniques as well. Right. Now what do we have over here on this side? So this is actually your um, exposure control. So this has actually got two separate buttons unlike the other one. So this first button you're going to be place, uh, pushing in and it's got a light on it. Um, this one's going to warm up that rotor and uh, get that anode moving so that we can create those x-rays. And then when that's warmed up and ready to go, we'll hit the exposure button. And we keep our fingers on both. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Oops, sorry. But we want to make sure <laughs> we don't have anybody in that x-ray room before we hit this button. That is okay? correct. The other thing, especially on this side of the room, the door needs to be closed because you don't want someone accidentally walking in while you're taking an exposure. Exactly. Okay. So. All set. Can. I'm sorry. Thank okay. you. So here's my prep button. I'm going to wait till the light stays steady. And then I'm going to hit the exposure button. And then I'm going to take both fingers off. And you can see over here, look how fast that is. Ta-da. 
beautiful. And it's perfect, I might add. Mm -hmm. Job well done. See a nice contrast and density in there. All right. Now, if you want to do another hand x-ray on this one, you can go ahead and cue it up. If I wanted to do this hand oblique in an oblique position, I could. If I changed my mind and said I don't want it, just click it and stick it in the garbage. There you go. Okay. If I wanted to put, um, say, a lateral instead, I've got my hands chosen. Instead of AP, I'm going to choose lateral. See, it comes it up cues it up. I click it, and then I would go back over, reposition my patient, and take the other exposure. Perfect. And how do we close out of this? To close out of this one, you just simply hit exit. Oops, wait, nope, sorry. No, 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 no. Cancel, <laughs> cancel. Hit the X up here. There we go. <laughs> if you close out, if you hit exit, it closes out everything. And it saves this information in the system, correct? Yes. So how would I pull it back up if, say, for an example, Joe Smith came in for a different type of X-ray? We would? Well, you can go and put his patient ID in there again. And it will pull them up easily. Ta-da. Oops, I hope you can see that. I think so. And you can just add it to his um, database. Or you can actually go over here to database. And you could do a patient name search. Oops, sorry. Um, and I'm going to change my calendar date because it's now May. And there's the x-ray that we just took. Excellent. Very, very, very good. So that's your digital side. Now remember, we don't have necessarily a dark room here because we don't need one. We've got digital and CR. Back in the day when they did the film storage, we had an actual dark room and oops, it's locked. It doesn't really matter, there's nothing in there anymore. No <laughs> the processor's gone, everything's gone. Yeah. Um, the processor's gone and we actually, this was the drop area where the film would come out and we actually covered that up because we don't have the dark room anymore. This is kind of just storage. The film bin's still there. Yep, here's your film bin though that you would have if you were using a film system. Um, and then, of course, the lights, come on. I think they. Yeah, probably disconnected, huh? Anyways, old system, and um, but this was the size of the dark room that we would work in. So when you came in, very tiny, yes. So when we came in, we'd have to shut the door behind, of course, um, turn off the light. This is the loading area that we would take the film, load our cassette, this is over here um, is a flasher. This is how we would put the information onto our cassette or onto our film. And then the processor was over here. So you can see we've got a very small area that you were actually working with. Um, it was very stinky. The fuel oh, holes were flowing through the machine and it was warm because of the blower. Exactly. Yep. And then it would just dump out your x-ray on the other side. So let me shut the lid up on that. Um, okay, Ms. Harmon, is there anything else that you think we should add to this? When you're done for the day, make sure that oh, you put good. your machine to rest so that when the power goes out, it doesn't disengage the locks and stuff comes crashing down. Very good. Put on a nice pillow to protect that housing. Put it to bed. Turn off your control panel first Ooh. and then your main power switch. Ta-da. And ladies and gentlemen, that would be it. That is our x-ray room in a nutshell and three quick little videos. Um, we'll probably come back and do a few more of these at a later date and time. Remember that um, we're going to put a sign-in sheet up there to have you come in if you want to lay hands on the equipment. If you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to ask either one of us. Uh, you can contact us through your Blackboard classes or through email or however it is that you like to, to talk to us. And hopefully we will see you very soon again face we to face. We miss you. We miss you. We miss you guys. Um, big time. So we're not used to this either. Yeah, I am. So, all right, folks, hope you enjoy that. Have a great week. Looking forward to talking to you again soon.